Hello. <laughs> how are you crying? Good. Thank you. How are you doing? Very, very good. First time on air. So glad to be with you both. Wow. Well, we're very excited to have you here on air with us. And Judith, is it your first time on air as well? This is my second time. Well, we're excited to have you back then. We obviously didn't scare you away the first time. <laughs> All right, well, would you both mind introducing yourselves to everyone that we have here that is tuned in and listening to the show? For sure. My name is Ibrahim. I'm a software engineer with the AWS Solutions Organization, um, and specifically I support a portfolio called the Generative AI Solutions Portfolio. So sorry, Adrian, not storage. We have to have <laughs> over here. He's blaming. See you, Adrian. I'll, I'll handle this one. <laughs> Judith, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Judith Joseph. I'm a solutions architect with AWS Solutions Org, and I'm really excited to be here and excited to talk about what we're going to present to you today. Sure. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to just jump right into it. Yeah, please. I love it. Let's go. Let's Data, yeah. So, so, I could talk. Yeah. Very, very quickly, just a brief introduction of what the solutions library in the organization is. So, customers who are looking to solve some sort of problem out there. Mm -hmm. There's so many great building blocks on AWS, but it can be difficult to sometimes to actually know how to apply that to solve your problem. And where to get started. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what our solutions organization is all about. And so the library provides a whole collection of different products out there from guidances, technical reference architectures, and sort of one of our flagship products of an AWS solution. So that's a full fully fledged sort of ready to go software product that customers can take, deploy in their accounts, really accelerate their journey on AWS. I really like the way that you called out solution because it, the idea is that you take these ready bit parts to go further and go faster. And you exactly. potentially go by, you know, kind of kidding um, yourself together, some sort of solution that you find. And it's like got all the things to let you get started, right? From technical reference architectures, implementation guides, mm -hmm. the source code is all open source. So it's available for you to go and extend it, look to see what all the internals are and really get jumping. In That's awesome. It's like that grace, the great glass elevator. It's taking you from the bottom all the way to the top right away. Yeah. And Fiona, I know you're quite a visual person. So if you don't mind, I I am. maybe show Let's you spider and you're making me so happy. Absolutely. Let's jump right in. Yeah, we jump into a demo. So here's an example of the landing page for the generative AI application builder. As I mentioned, I'm on the portfolio that supports generative AI applications. And we look to see, you know, what are the patterns? What are the technologies? And how can we help accelerate customers in implementing those? So, so you're pretty busy these days, I would assume. You know what? It it's it's very fun. Like <laughs> you know, we get we get to play with so many cool technologies and figuring out how customers can apply these to help solve all the different problems. So it, it's been a fantastic journey and, and one that awesome. I think Judith shares that it's been quite a joy to be in. Very fun. But if you look at this this landing page, you can see an implementation guide's ready for you. It gives you an overview of the solution, some of the benefits that we see that customers find in using it. And then, like I mentioned, you know, architecture diagrams are there. Uh, you can go into the source code, view the GitHub repository. All these different things are there. But one of the biggest pieces is for those who just want to dive right in, get started, and get things going, there's this launch an AWS console. That'll Ooh. take you right into your console account, deploy the solution, and get you ready to go in a second. Wow. It deploys it for so there's a cloud formation template associated to this launch button and it's kicking it exactly. off. Exactly. It'll get it into your account. And once you go through that deployment process, this is what you end up with. So this is what we call the deployment dashboard of the solution. And okay. our primary goal, sort of the customer problem that we're really trying to solve is we found two two primary kind of categories of customer challenges. The first is, well, how is a generative AI application any different from a traditional application? Right. And like some of the answers are, well, it's not too different to all the things you would do for a normal application. You still got to do it for generative AI applications. So they wanted a way to offload some of that so that they can really focus on how generative AI can be applied to the particular business value they're trying to generate. Absolutely. It's, it's letting them focus on their differentiators and we take care exactly. of the, yeah. Exactly. I love, exactly. It looks like we have some people in the chat. As Bobcat007 says, I've used a few of those solutions and they really help to jumpstart and get going. That is awesome. Siobhan says, this looks sick. Thank you so much. And well, actually not thank you to me, but thank you to our wonderful guests who are showing you. And we also have a LinkedIn user who says there's so many Willy Wonka references. That's really crazy. I wouldn't know what that's about. <laughs> but um, I do appreciate a good old tiny movie reference. So like Grandpa Joel, get out of bed and do a little bit of a dance. Jake, awesome. 
Kenai, Kenai. Why? I didn't say the dance for him. You hit on something that is so hard to impress on uh, customers as well as internal stakeholders. You've got to find a business problem to go through and solve for. Chatbot's great. Exactly. You can tie that to something that some of the totally. revenue or finance or uh, executive leadership has as an initiative that they want to get solved. It's yet very hard not only to get momentum, but backing. Even if it's the coolest thing in the world, it doesn't really matter unless you can solve a business problem with it. Exactly. Yeah. And that actually transitions us into the second thing that customers look to solve is the space is moving so quickly, so, so quickly. And so how can we enable them to keep up to date with all of the latest patterns as they start to come out? Mm -hmm. So that's that other piece of the way you build your applications will change based on the nuances of generative AI technologies. So, you know, latency is such a big concern with these models. Well, how do you improve that customer experience to start streaming tokens, say, back as quickly as possible in a secure and scalable manner? So those are really the things we try to kind of, I guess, impress on customers, impress on their viewers, and sort of some of the, I guess, value add of, a, of an AWS solution. But if, but if you see my screen right here, we've got that deployment dashboard. And this is the primary console that you can come in and build various use cases. So this might be for your own personal experimentation. But it could also be kind of in a production environment where maybe I'm the core administrator who's building one for you, Fiona, who leads our finance department, you, Adrian, who leads our HR department. And so I've got that flexibility to kind of isolate these use cases so that customers go, but let me just show you what I mean. So you got it. Right. Let's, let's see. If, if you go into this deploy, you'll see that we today support two different types. Judith was on air before and showcased kind of the initial version of the solution. We've got a couple of changes since then. So I'll focus more on a couple of those and maybe the viewers, we can link back to show them the, the previous version. But two types of use cases that we look to support customers in building, two types of applications. The first is what we call a text use case. You could think of this as, you know, there's the word rag gets thrown over a lot around. It's you've got some sort of proprietary information, proprietary data, some kind of static workflow that you really want to you know, get that generative AI, that large language wall to support you with. And so this is where you'd connect your knowledge base, maybe configure your prompts, select the model that you want, and which was kind of an early need of customers to see which works best. Um, and then there's the second workflow that we have, which is one of the newer ones that we just launched last year at reInvent, which is our agentic use case. And this takes mm. the Bedrock agent component um, made by the Bedrock team and allows you to sort of extract that out of the console and wrap all of those kind of production application pieces that you need to really scale this and to deploy this into your account. So that might be things like user management and authentication, you know, surfacing this in front with an API, building a UI around it. So we give you all these components to really help you um, get started as quickly as possible. I mean, it sounds like you've really thought of the customer here and it's resonating with our, with the viewers that we have in the chat. We have one, an off draw says, oh, wow, with three or with four W's at the end. Tier Flow says, you guys looking great too. Thanks, Todd. And uh, Jib Java 6 says, color me intrigued. It sounds like they're intrigued and wanting to learn more. So maybe you should keep showing us a little bit more. So again, you know, I think we'll jump into some of the more, you know, seeing is believing type thing, but just Absolutely. before jumping into that, if you see here on the left panel, you see there's really like this five stage process of building this text use case here. Mm -hmm. And so that, that goes into some of the general pieces, you know, what are the set of features you want to connect into? Do you want to support user feedback? This is one of those new features that we've mm -hmm. enabled. Giving a description, a name, do you want a UI, do you not, right? And, and all these different pieces to enable you to move forward, right? Step number two in the wizard, figure out your network configuration. Again, this is that balance between quick, rapid experimentation but then at the same time, how can you productionize these elements, mm. right? Um, and network configuration is a big focus area for our customers. And the next piece is selecting your model, right? The we want to part. give customers, exactly. You want to give customers that diverse range of all those different bedrock models. Yes. And so go in, get started, figure out what's- Can we use Nova models on here? Say that again, sir. Can we use Nova models? Oh, look at that. I want Nova Pro. Choose Nova Pro. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Um, and again, it really makes this process quite simple. You're seeing there's maybe two or three clicks, but I've got that flexibility to put more information as needed. Do I want sort of to ground these with background knowledge? I've got the configuration mm -hmm. options to do all of this. Okay. And the final piece before we show you what's going on, you've got your prompt template. Make it as complex, as simple as you like. And the solution will really help to kind of push you along to get you started as quickly as possible. 
is this where I would lay down my guardrails and say, and it set the specific confines of, hey, these are the parameters where I want you to respond. I want you to respond as a cranky uh, upstate New Yorker that is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm thinking movies in my head and one specific one where you've been forced to travel to the South to represent one of your family relatives in, in a court of law. Um, those of us at home that are playing that are movie buffs, please throw it to the comments if you know which movie I'm talking about. It's a classic. Uh, it's a quarter sort of American cinema. But I digress. Um, but that, that's exactly it. It's set your roles. Set your guard rails. Exactly. Set your roles. Set your guard rails. The tone, customer branding, all of that. But since you mentioned that keyword guardrails, there also is the formal guardrails that you can go in and connect to really ground your application. Um, but let, let's have a look at an example of the agentic case. So in this case, I went into Bedrock and I created, you'll see once you deploy this out of the solution, we give you a link with an application here for you. So with this Bedrock agent, um, sort of a parks and recreation service, if you can imagine four primary actions, I can get the list of programs backed by an API. I can make a new reservation, get my reservations. And then I'd say even I can cancel the reservation. So, you know, if I look here, I've got a whole bunch of programs. Pick one for me, Fiona. What do you think? I want uh, senior yoga in the East York Community Center. And I do see that someone says my microphone is too loud. I'm really sorry. There's nothing I can do about it right now. So you're just going to have to listen to my voice. Yeah. But on a more positive note, we do have another person who said that, wow, it looks so easy to get started. They could definitely see themselves using this. So I do love to hear that. So here, let's see what programs are available. So I'd like to connect certain new programs. What is available? And you mentioned that you're interested in this senior yoga one. Yeah, I want to know about senior yoga for 60 so year go. olds. Listen, seniors make great company, so you, I'm sure they won't mind. So you know what? I'll say, I'll say, you know what? When is the yoga? And again, in the background, this agent is going in, figuring out what your intent is and surfacing that and passing that off onto the, um, onto the API that can service that actual request. Get the mm -hmm. sessions, 12 spots, 15 spots, any preference on the time, 10 a.m., both of them. We'll Judith, see. what's your preference? Yes. Yeah. Did aim. <laughs> well, so we'll take it to say session and it'll go and make that reservation. And now I can go in and say, what are my reservations oh, look at that. and then you'll see i had a pre-filled program of learn to swim mm -hmm. and we've now got this yoga one and so what might this look like kind of you know in you know a sort of environment right if you imagine sort of a city that provides a parking recreation service mm -hmm. you, you'd be able to apply this either in the background right one of the assets we provide when you build this use case and not only this chat interface because you may not want to leverage everything through chat you also get mm -hmm. these APIs that you can integrate into your wider application. So here's an example kind of pre-filled um, before I pass this that. over to Judith is enroll my 12-year-old son and just sort of look at the set of programs and determine, well, you know what? I think this basketball program is probably best for your son. You could see here there's no spots available. So when I say sign me up, it kind of navigates through that workflow and says, ah, maybe not so good. And all of this is kind of in quite a natural interface. And you can imagine this. You'd, you'd do this over a contact center, say right? Where, mm -hmm. If you gave in a call and did all of that. So there's really quite a bit of power here, but you saw how simple that was by building your experiences either in the Bedrock console or building it through our user interface and then exposing that out in this application with all of those components you need either to experiment, iterate, but then eventually also give that off to, to customers. That's awesome. It definitely seems very easy for customers to use. And I know you said you're going to pass it off to Judith. Judith, what are you going to be sharing now? All yours. Yep. Thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, my demo is another agentic use case. May, may not be as interesting as uh, Ibrahim. Hey, don't sell yourself short. I think we're going to love it. So this is, a, this is actually a real world use case that we took uh, for uh, production. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay. So we created this agent for a particular customer. And the bedrock agent that we use here uh, acts as an intelligent interface between business users and structured enterprise data. So we don't need the middleman, like uh, technical users to write SQL queries and query get the data. So what we have here is, so uh, the Bedrock agent here, how many customers do I have? The Bedrock agent is capable of dynamically converting it to a mm -hmm. SQL index, executing the command against the database and retrieving precise results. So you see the results here, and I just wanted to show you all um, what the 
uh, SQL syntax for that query was. So I put in that mm -hmm. query there, and here is what the agent gave me. How many orders do I have? Um, so I have 16 orders. And who's my most loyal customer? This is one of my favorite questions to ask the agent. So it automatically interpreted that my most loyal customer is probably one that has placed the maximum number mm -hmm. of orders. So there you go. It told me that, and it even even gave the reasoning, right? He placed the most orders, third three orders, and could be your most loyal customer at this point. So this is, yeah, it kind of builds trust in the system, similar to like citations on a on a you know text based knowledge base. I like that this is showing you exactly what the SQL query is that it used to pull, so that you know if there if there was some misinterpretation and a user notices that that query isn't what they were looking for, they understand why they've gotten the answer that they did. Exactly, you can check the correctness of the query. Totally. And the main uh, differentiator for this agent that I'm using in that I'm using with Gap, the Gen AI I built it is, I spin up the agent, I do my work, connect it to Gap. Now I have a secure user interface. All the security, enterprise security part that Gap brings, uh, I'm able to use that. So, you know, it's extensibility, auditability, everything that comes with Gap, I'm able to use with the Bedrock agents that I create. Um, and uh, this uh, solution is very uh, important for self-serve analytics. I know uh, we are reaching out of time, so I want to uh, show one more use case. This is the text use case, right? So yeah. I have an agent that is running in the background. It is uh, monitoring all the machines, collecting error, anomaly data, um, pulling responses uh, from customers, uh, from, um, I'm sorry, on-site operators about that data, pulling knowledge from the knowledge base and data source. But it also creates a unique ID, uh, that hmm. which you see here. So I'm using the text use case of Gab here, and I said, hey, what can you tell me about this particular unique ID? And then <laughs> from the knowledge base, all the work that the agent has done and summarized and put in the S3 bucket, for example, the Gab is able to use the rack, pull the knowledge from the uh, data source, send it along with the prompt to the large language model, and it shows me the information here. Hey, this unique ID is associated with an error about this aircon device, and here are the troubleshooting steps. I have the source documents, um, so this is good, right? You can uh, check how oh. that information is, and there's a feedback feature: uh, thumbs up and thumbs down, and you can actually give the feedback. Especially, yeah, I like that. Cool, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't like this answer because it didn't answer what I asked for. So you can write this, and all this gets stored in S3 which you can again use for additional insights when you are deploying the solution, either for your own customers or for your end customers. That's all I have. That's awesome. So you've made it easy for customers to, oh, this, someone actually just asked a question. I was, someone said, how beginner friendly is this service to someone who's new to Gen AI? I was just about to say, you've made it easy to build an application for someone who's new to Gen AI. Siobhan says, I'm just starting off with the basic concepts, let alone implementation. Siobhan, I got to say, it kind of sounds like you are their target customer, but Irene and uh, Judith, you might have something uh, more targeted to say to yeah, no, uh, viewers sure. like this. That's exactly it, right? And again, it's, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to be a cloud expert. You don't necessarily need to be an application expert. If you are those things, the way that you can scale this is really, you know, amplified. Right. But mm -hmm. at the base, it really allows you to just focus on a few clicks, you know, Try out different models, right? Totally. Try out different prompts. These are all kind of really accessible things that allow you to get started with the solution quickly and, you know, off to the races and, and just see where you can go. So there's, there's so much more that the team has planned and I'd really impart on viewers. The last thing would be just there's so many other great solutions and great portfolios across the entire library. So anytime really you have a problem, a solution, something you're trying to figure out, check out the library. There's so many candies in the chocolate factory, and this is your golden ticket. So thank you both so much for giving everyone here that golden ticket. We're so excited to have gotten to see this, to have had you on the show. Judith, this is your second time. Hoping to have you here for a third. Ibrahim, hoping you'll come back for a second, um, and hope you both have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Take care.